Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. How are you? Apa? Sorry eh. Yeah. Lambat sikit. Eh, belum lah. Eh, sorry. Belum ke sembilan. Okay, okay. Hai. Tu tak sihat ke? Tak adalah. Pagi-pagi ni. Sejuk pula. Quite cold. Ya. Yeah. I tengah nak main dengan background. Boleh tak background dekat belakang kita? Uh, Zoom tak sure. Kan? Macam tak ada kan? I tahu Google Meet. Tak ada. Saja je. Kadang-kadang buat budak ni lalu belakang. Hmm. Kita background. <laughs> doktor, doktor kejar nak tanya. Uh, I did uh, some of the examples in topic 4, probabilities. Hmm. Um, tapi ada ada yang macam uh, kalau I punya jawapan uh, berbeza dengan you like few decimals. Tak apa. Tak apa. Tak apa. <laughs> Dia yang beza macam kat ujung tu. Let's see if the answer is 25.4. Uh -huh. You dapat 35.8, 35.9, uh -huh. 24.99 apa, okay lagi. Dia, dia, dia macam, if it's too far, like if the answer is 25.4 and you dapat 29. Uh, okay. uh, biasanya the pangkat, the, the ujung tu lah, the belakang, the decimal at the back tu, it's okay because it's rounding uh, differences. Right? Uh -huh. Maybe I use four decimal spaces, you use two. Because normally, uh -huh. even if we use... Um, you know, whatever decimal space dekat belakang, pangkal itu tetap akan sama. If it's 25 oh, right. point something, it will be 25 point something. You got this kat belakang-belakang tu. Kita biasa kalau makin pun kita tengok depan je. <laughs> I don't see kat belakang-belakang tu. But if you are like 27, walaupun nampak sikit kan, but we will check your working. Oh, okay. But dia akan berbeza. That's the thing about decimal numbers ni lah. Uh, it will uh, affect sikit. Okay. Tak lagi nak buat apa? background lah benda. Tak apalah. <laughs> I think it can just. Uh, <laughs> okay. Today, several tu lah important things nak share with you all. So I hope everyone has or will join our class today. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I only talk about it now is because I've only received a um, green light daripada Dr. Wan. Dr. Wan kan director kan. So of course mm -hmm. kita kena ikut dia lah. And before this macam unsure. So I pun macam okay. I prepare lah, uh, whatever it is according to the maybe MP structure but then um, you know when the exam list dah keluar itu kan Zoraina you email I tu I tanya tu mm -hmm. memang that one is for undergrad the full time students mm -hmm. and then masa tu I contact the balik ah Dr. Wan and ask her what it and she said okay je if I want to follow how I um, assess my full time students dengan you all which I think baru fair lah kan uh, mm -hmm. so I'm hoping to get everyone here baru empat orang eh termasuk eh so hopefully everyone gets to join lah. Okay, so far I have like five or six, uh, five students yang dah submit the infographic. So far so good. Okay, macam tu je, simple je. I mean, um, relatively speaking, in terms of grading, I am not as strict with you guys compared to full-time students. So, fahamkan situation berbeza. Tapi yelah, we still need to maintain quality lah. So, tak boleh lah terlampau linear lah pula to the extent you all tak buat apa-apa because there are some peer student yang terlampau lah pula terlampau linear macam eh tak boleh macam ni because we still have to maintain standards but I do understand yang you guys are working kan macam kita lah so the responsibility semua tu ada you know so it's expected and for me as long as you guys buka buku you know once in a while pun kira okay lah that is why I'm actually um, doing what I'm going to announce lepas ni Okay, so because I think it's more in line with um, for two things. One thing uh, is more in line with online learning and the fact that you guys are working. And secondly, the summer lah with my full-time students. So I said it's a macam adil gitu. Yeah, we'll wait lah kejap because it's baru 9.01. So I'm thinking maybe the rest baru dapat the link. Okay. Doctor. Ah, yeah. uh, for assignment one, uh -huh. question four. Ah yes. <laughs> dia <laughs> sampling distribute. Uh, dia macam problem. It is a probability question. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Awak um, refer to the pages yang ada tak kat atas tu. Chapter six kan? Ah uh, yeah. Dia bagi. You buat uh -huh. ikut tu je. And after central limit theorem tu. Ah uh, yang that sampling distribution kan? Ah uh, dia probability. Uh -huh. Cuma beza uh, dia, it's not probability as in chapter 4, probability. Yeah. Uh, you buat probability tapi untuk sample mean. 
kalau um, chapter 4 you buat probability <laughs> macam probability lah probability the x more than 5 macam tu. Uh -huh. Ni kalau for sampling ni dia bukan x dia x bar. Itu je biasa dia. Eh uh, uh, lah. Uh, uh, dia z uh, uh, sama dengan uh, x bar minus mu over uh, standard error. error. Uh, standard error. Ma over n. Sigma over n square. Ah, itulah doktor saya tak dapat dah jawapan bila buat sigma over n square tu. Ada, boleh. N, n means, uh, n means uh, kita punya. Sample size lah. Sample size. Sample size awak tu. Hmm. And you pergi supermarket kan? Hmm. Berapa berapa banyak. Tapi I kan bagi mention, uh, I said less than 25. Eh, I cakap apa? Oh, uh, more, uh, at least 25. Ah, At least, so more than 25 lah. Ah, actually, and then because since you guys are uh, Kan you guys have control over how many N Kalau macam hmm. you all kikir dapat pelik-pelik tu Adjust sendiri Oh my okay Lambat cakap kenapa my Z besar sangat Ada dua option Kalau ha, Z dia besar sangat Z besar Kenapa? Yes. Because if you tengok table tu Paling besar is um, 3 point eh, 4 point Eh sorry uh, 2 point apa the, Paling uh, besar 3, 3, 3 point 3 point 09 Betul? Yes So anything more than that is approaching half Approaching oh, okay. Jangan buat equals tu kan kalau konsep matematik oh, kan limit okay. kan uh, approximately yang macam ulat tu kan yang uh -huh. menghampiri approaching oh, okay. approaching 0.5 so kalau nak kita kita buat je 0.49999 macam tu lah tapi ada je student yang letak je 0.5 I tak ada didak tapi kalau betul-betul maka penuh tu is actually konsep limit tu sebab kalau kita lukis the normal tu kan kat ujung tu mana ada dia touch mm -hmm. so, kalau you buat equals to half maksudnya kat ujung tu dia akan sentuh dia akan sentuh yo yo line uh, x dia tak sentuh kan dia asymptot tu kalau you baca the apa if you read the characteristics of the normal distribution kan one of them is asymptotic maksud dia ujung tu dia akan macam go dia nampak menghampiri going nearer tapi it never touch that's yes. why kalau the bigger your z anything more than the table sebab table you limit paling besar table tu kan three, uh, apa 0.09 tu eh, sorry apa 3.09 Ah, 3.09 Yeah, that's the biggest Tak apa, so, maksud dia Any Z yang more than 3.09 Menghampiri half lah, itu je Dia konsep hmm. probability But that is the thing that I nak you guys figure out Ah, uh, That is actually learning Sebenarnya lah And that uh. thing you, is actually in the textbook pada And mungkin cara The textbook is explaining tu Maybe it's a bit unclear ke apa But there are plenty of other sources kan Banyak e-book I share kat YouTube Itu je sebenarnya Oh, ha, okay. So, no problem with that lah. Ha? No problem with uh, Z. Uh, um, ada. More Cuma, than... Okay, I can mention ada dua, dua option. Satu tu, you can take any Z value yang bigger. Bigger than 3.09, you uh -huh. can make it approaching. Tapi some people macam rasa tak sedap macam nak tulis 0.49 uh -huh. macam tu. So, uh -huh. another option is, you buat like and you. Okay. Kan you have power kan? You control berapa set berapa grocery item you ubah ubah lah lebihkan ke kurangkan nanti bila you ubah adjust n tu kan you ubah ubah so you macam trial and error so right. bila n tu ubah ubah so obviously kat bawah tu standard error tu akan berubah ubah so you get ubah ubah lah figure you so you will get lah at z yang cantik yang kecil sikit even the mean and the standard uh, uh, standard yeah, uh, of course you can ubah lah if you ubah <laughs> if you change your sample size obviously you have to change it juga we calculate lah you punya okay. mean and saturation tu tak apa let's say you dah hantar tak apa you unsubmit betul kan submit balik kan sebab ah you know hantar you lagi ragu-ragu yang tu ah tak apa that's the itulah learningnya so it's actually nothing okay right. okay je alright so macam let's say you dah submit ada lima orang kot dah submit dah but if you oh, betul ke ni tak apa you unsubmit je lah kan boleh unsubmit you all je lah bagi ni eh full time student tak boleh <laughs> so, uh, so you all unsubmit tengok betul kan submit balik as long as is it tonight midnight ni malam ni kan graphic tonight uh, ah yeah. eh wait infographic tonight yang assignment yeah. one besok kan ah uh, boleh je still got time uh, the reason kenapa dia menampak macam back to back sebab infographic kan dia bagi tahu awal kan infographic from the first class so by right essentially Oh, infographic dia ada hantar empat orang ke empat ke lima orang. Hmm, hopefully everyone hantar lah eh, infographic tu today, eh, tonight. Hantar je. I mean kalau lewat whichever for whatever reason you tak boleh, you know, commitment, boleh je uh, hantar lewat sikit. But then of course I have to be fair with those who do stick to the deadline. Memang akan ada penalty lah kan tak dalam rubrik tu. Because my policy memang I I never 
um, tak terima assignment. Uh, full time students ke, part time student lambat macam mana pun. Tapi jangan melampau bulan eh. Like a few days okey lah. Like lambat macam mana, up to one week pun ada yang you know. Han, I still terima. Cuma kena adil with the others, I deduct lah points kat belakang tu. Um, normally for normal SEM, I deduct 10%. Yang banyak. Memang nampak je banyak. But that's the point. I nak orang tak hantar lambat. But for during ERTL ni, um, learning online, I deduct 5%. Um, tengoklah macam mana uh, apa it's just to encourage everyone submit on time so the reason because biasa when i dah marking kan kan our mind kan macam in the zone tengah grading so i grade you all a different different topic kan different tapi i grade pasal bila dah habis tu dah hantar semua so i would like to tutup buku lah you know like jam uh, habis ni bila dah hantar semua tiba-tiba ada seorang hantar lambat ni kita dah lah kita our mindset marking tu dah tutup sebenarnya dia ala buat kena buka balik so that's the point lah so bila i grade i like to be consistent macam tak naklah dengan dia ni strict dengan dia ni lenient so everyone akan sama and normally i akan tengok macam untuk kelas yang kecil macam you guys uh, before i hantar you guys i leave it in my draft dulu i tengok i akan compare relatively lah and normally i will tend to compare between you guys of course i have my threshold kan my, my threshold tu that level tu but then tengok circumstances so but sometimes i think if i compare all of it dengan threshold takut <laughs> tak tahu so normally i will okay they do do lah i compare with the threshold and i compare between you guys juga so if among you guys are so good you know so macam the kena lah it's a, kind of like a competition among yourself tapi the threshold is there lah the standard the threshold is the rubric tu lah kan the rubric tu apa-apa maka i put there dia that is the maximum so don't worry if you don't get the maximum i as a student kau tak pernah dapat maximum like all the time if within that certain range that's why we are learning kan you only akan belajar tu today class belajar the confidence interval so tu kan masuk dia kalau the average awak dekat-dekat situ okay ah that's what it means that is the application of confidence interval ni meaning that if you are below average tapi macam standard deviation standard error tu sikit it's fine ha, itu sebenarnya application in real life it doesn't have to be like you rasa macam itu nya tak tapi it, it's average so if the class average kat tengah ni and you dekat dekat situ maksudnya you okay lah ah uh, yeah i mean tapi kalau kelas average tu sini awak jauh benar kat situ uh, means, uh, orang lain semua okey orang lain semua dekat dekat awak seorang yang jauh so something is wrong not with everyone else macam tu that's like a way for us to compare uh, between our performance and the average uh, biasalah macam KPI so tu kan kerja memang kita sampai kita underperform tapi if we are still in the realm or in the range yang acceptable by the company kita tak adalah kena apa reprimand ke bos panggil ke benda kan ah biasalah there are times yang kita tak perform sangat kan? but if we are still within the range kan dia range dia ah itulah confidence interval yang kita kira ni ah, i think for the next assignment kau tak silap eh tak tak next assignment is test tak apa but this is for knowledge ah, berapa orang dah ada ni ah kira dan bbb ni dan ramai masuk bagus alah baru 8 astaga 8 orang dia baru okey we have Uh, pasal lah video kejap lo you all Jadi, so I nak share screen so you all boleh nampak lah Okay, I'm gonna share Boleh nampak eh? Okay Okay, I nak share Okay, this is our class hmm. So, I dah post today's attendance eh uh, You all tick je lah kat situ uh, For me personally, I rather you all tick awal-awal Takut lupa uh, Some of you begitulah honest Nak tick selepas tick video semua. Allah, gak ada lupa. You all tick je lah dulu. Attendance tu. Even the back-back data tu, you all tick je lah. Okay. Sebab uh, I see, eh, BBM office, dia orang uh, rajin juga. They, we have a new staff. And sister, apa lah nama dia? Fariza. Dia gantikan brother Nick. Uh, she's so good. Itu last weekend, she contact I. Tanya berapa orang datang, berapa orang tak datang. <laughs> so, I kena selalu update with her. That's why pentingnya my attendance list ni lah. Okay, so boleh check. Uh, siapa yang rasa macam I bagi kosong-kosong tu, you just uh, inform me lah kenapa tak ada ke apa. Because I have to inform back to them. Because BBM Center ni is separate from the main kuliah. Uh, main kuliah tu tak adanya. The office nak tanya kita student macam mana. Because the student akan dapat uh, apa tu, warning letter and then dia akan ada their own repercussions. But you guys are like slightly different management kan. So I have to report to office Dr. Wan. Okay, people. 
Betul lah, mai dalam kelas kita ni. We have 16 student. 16 siapa seorang lagi? Okay, Laila Tul Fitri, are you here? Laila Tul? Tak ada. Laila Tul, baru join kan? I pun risau juga ni. Laila Tul Fitri, you baru join. Kawan-kawan semua dah dah hantar dah. <laughs> Assignment first uh, first assessment which is the infographics tu. Ah uh, I tak tahu lah you kenalah catch up sendiri eh. Masalah dia tak ada kat sini. I cakap-cakap pun you all yang dengar. Aduh hai. Okey, siapa ada? Ah uh, Zaina ada, Arifin, Lukman, Ikmal, Shekfa, Kul, Yusniza, Alif, Haida. Betullah. Hmm ni yeah, ramai. But in a way alhamdulillah lah ramai. I think most not most all of you who are in the class list have joined the class. So in that aspect, I bersyukur lah. Sebab the previous lecturer yang ajar you all punya unggas tu cakap yang register in this class 13 orang je. <laughs> so lagi lah dia confuse. Eh mana lagi 3 orang? How come in my class ada 16 orang? Kenapa kelas dia 13 je? So entahlah. Buat pandai lah. You all ni. I kau boleh malas nak jaga attendance. Like there are so many other things I can jaga kan. Grading, buat mark, buat assignment. Attendance nak jaga, like tolong lah. You all besar lah kot. So, I'm, that's among the thing, even with my management, I cakap, eh, boleh tak I tak jaga attendance? Saya macam cakap sekolah. Like to me, budak nak datang, datang. Especially in your case, okay, paying students. <laughs> datang, datang. Nah, even for my full time student pun, alamak, I malas dia nak you know, menjaga, like siapa datang, tik tik tik. Because I would think that would be the student's responsibility lah. My, my job is I akan uh, grade as best as I can. Um, you know, and give, provide with you notes, videos uh, so that I can focus my time on more, I would say, substantial things lah rather than check attendance, students, seklaka. Okay. So, eh mana nak tengok tadi? Berapa orang eh dalam kelas kita? You all nampak tak? Kan seorang je nampak. Nampak tu kan? Berapa orang dah? Sebab I tak nampak lah. Saya akan tengah tunjuk sekarang. Sekarang ada lapan orang. Lapan. Masa Tugas. 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 Uh, anyway, if you dah submit, pasti rasa macam nak ubah-ubah something last minute boleh je. You unsubmit and tapi don't forget to submit balik. But if you dah submit tu, uh, just you know, submit je lah. You know, like what, what is there to change anyway. Okay, so submit. Okay, so the uh, deadline is tonight. Midnight. This is for infographics. Okay. Yang tomorrow is this one. Assignment one. I mean, so far none has done yet. I'm assuming you guys tengah buat lah. Uh, so just now, Sister Zuana was asking what happened kalau my Z besar sangat. Uh, so I mentioned there are two ways okay, to deal with a big Z. The thing is, table you, eh, look, I buka kot table. Sekejap ya. Oh, sekejap. Oh, I ada table. Ah, ada. Sebab segala benda nak tengok dah. Ha, tutup ni. Ni table kan? Ha. Apa kat ujung dunia ni? Hold on a minute. Okay. DT. Okay. This is your Z table. Nampak? <coughs> kan? Okay tak? Okay? Nampak, nampak. Okay, okay. nampak. Uh, you all kena respond juga kot. I tak nak. <laughs> Ada lag sikit. You all angguk ke tak angguk. Okay. So the biggest because you see our Z table here is a non-cumulative table. Maksud dia every time you look at the table, we always start with kat tengah ni. Zero. Maybe you studied statistics years ago. Dulu. Uh, I don't know, diploma ke some of you pernah buat diploma ke apa-apa ataupun whichever uh, you akan nampak a different kind of set table yang cumulative you akan nampak weird, okay. ignore all of that, okay. kita fokus pakai table ni je so I'm assuming everyone begins on an equal field in my class okay, regardless lah, because I know some of you mungkin rasa inferior, alah I tak pernah belajar tak apa, 
kat dalam sekarang ni everyone equal. Semua orang I'm assuming tak pernah belajar benda ni. So this is the only thing you can tengok. Okay. So tengok table ni every time you baca let's say if your z is 0 0.75. Okay. Itu z you. Lepas you kira you dapat z 0 0.75. You tengok sini. 0 0.7 mana? Sini. Kan? 0 0.75 uh, mana? Sini. Uh, so your probability is 0 0.2734. Okay, nak explain macam ni, I'll show you this one. Nampak kat atas ni? This drawing up here. Okay, so this fella, this person, let's say you kira. Alamak, internet tak stable lah pula. Okay, if you get your Z 0 0.475. If you kira your Z dapat 0 0.475, you tengok sini. 0. Eh, sorry. Uh, silap. If you kira, if you calculate your Z and you got 1.96. 1.96. How you know? Nampak ni? 1.96 kan? Okay. So, you go here. Tengok kat Z. 1.96. Mana 6? Sini. Nampak tak ni? So, your probability, if your Z is 1.96, is 0 0.475. Nampak tak sini? Probability is the area that you shade, area yang you all lorik di bawah under the normal curve. Nampak sini, tengok sini. So, ni beza dia tau. What you write down here, nampak ni? You can see my mouse kan? What you write down here is your Z values. What you shade here is your probability, kebaran kalian. Faham? Some student confused lagi. Bezanya, Z ni bukan probability. Z is distance. Tahu distance? Jarak. How far you are from the center. Center awak ni zero. Sebab when you standardize, you ingat balik formula standardize? To get Z, Z is X minus mu over sigma. Ha, you all yang dah tengok ni faham lah. Kalau tak pernah tengok nota tu memang. <laughs> In another window, you all buka lah textbook tu okay ataupun tengok nota you okay to get z is we tak tulis tapi tulis lah apa to get z is uh, x minus uh, mu over sigma so if you punya um, x macam markah awak sama dengan class average awak punya markah x class average mu lah kan kan average so kalau class uh, your markah and the class average sama atas tu akan jadi kosong lah kan Katakan markah awak 70. Average pun 70. So 70 tolak 70 over whatever pun dia akan kosong. That is why dekat sini the center is zero. All the time. It will be all the time. This is called a standardized normal table. Kalau tengok kat textbook dia akan nampak a standardized normal table. This will be it. Okay. So it always starts how you read this table always beginning from zero kat tengah ni. So Sometimes you kira Z akan ada positif. Sometimes you kira Z akan ada negatif. The positive negative tu sebenarnya just to show you nak lorik kat mana. If it's positive Z, maksudnya you are going to shade on your right. Macam mamat ni lah. Macam ni. But if you get negative 1.96, okay, you boleh ignore yang color orange, um, chocolate ni. You lorik belah sini, belah kiri. Faham? Faham? So basically whether it's positive or negative is just to show you direction. Because zero is your Center kan zero kan? Anything bigger than zero, positif lah. You lorik lah belah sini. Oh, oh actually in your case belah sini lah. So anything negative, you lorik lah belah kiri zero tu. Okay, because if you look at this table, mana ada negatif, betul? Tengok table ni, tak ada tak ada negatif. So some students selalu tanya, I, ne I dapat negative something matter macam nak baca table ni. Positive negative tu, is just telling you where to shade your probability to the right or to the left. Sebab, In by definition, probability tak ada negatif. Probability kan kebarang kalian. Mana ada kebarang kalian negatif? Kebarang kalian, if you read the textbook, dia punya, there are a lot of characteristics. One of the characteristics is probability is between 0 to 1. Betul? 0. What's the probability that's going to rain today? Tengok macam mendung je. 0.5 kot. Now, what does it mean 0.5? It means half. There's half a chance it might rain. Half a chance it might not rain. Separuh, separuh. But if it actually rain, one lah. Because it rain, nampak? So probability tu is like a spectrum tau. Daripada sini kosong sampai satu. So probability is from zero to one only. It will not be lower than zero. Lower than zero means negative. So memang tak ada negative kat sini. And probability will also not be more than one. So the reason kenapa our probability, okay, dengar eh? Probability kat dalam ni tau. 
I highlight lah nampak. Yang kat dalam ni probability. Yang kat luar ni Z. Okay ada bezanya. Z tu is the distance. Distance, jarak, distance. Ha, kalau you all lupa, takut macam tak faham. Tapi tempat ni. It shows everything in this diagram. Nampak ni? Ni Z kan? Maksud dia, anything that you tulis along that horizontal axis is your Z value. The further you are from the zero, lagi jauh, nampak ni? 1.96 jauh kan from zero, lagi besar lah you punya probability. So just now our friend was asking, what happened my Z besar? Macam ni Z dia, Z dia 1.96 dah area macam ni. Imagine Z you 5. Empat. Memang maksud dia lagi besar lah probability you. Betul tak? Logically. Logic. Benda ni I nak you ketangkap sikit. Okay. In your table, the biggest Z dia bagi is 3.09. So if your Z is 3.09, probability awak 0.4990. Oh. But then let's say, time madam I kira my Z 3.5. Tak wujud dalam table. Maksud dia, like you punya probability bertambah besar lah. Approaching half. So it will be maybe 0.4999. Macam tu lah. So you can just write approaching kan ada simbol approaching approaches saya tengok macam hatu tulis macam ulat sikit tu kan macam tu uh, approaching 0.5 or you can put 0.49999 macam tu some student tulis je 0.5 but um, ikut konsep tu incorrect sebab if you read in the textbook ada konsep asymptote asymptote maksud dia nampak kat hujung ni ni nampak macam touching tapi in reality the green line tu tak touch tau Itu maksud asymptote. Kalau you belajar matematik, you akan belajar pasal limit lah, continuity lah benda tu. So maksud dia that your curve will not touch your x axis. It approaches. Tu maksud dia. Sebab kalau dia touch, maksud dia dah ada penutup. Nombor ada penutup ke guys? Tak ada kan? Orang tanya you, what's the biggest number? Apa? One million? Kita ada billion. One billion? Kita ada trillion. Kita ada trillion. You know get what I mean? Nombor, there is no limit to numbers. It will go on and on. That's why it's infinity. Okay. Alright. Okay. So that's why kat sini you akan cakap it approaches half. Kenapa half? Sebab you tengok table, you tengok you punya curve ni. Area under curve 100%. Betul? Total area. Jumlah kawasan. 100%. 100% tu apa? Bukan satu. Satu lah kan? One. Kan? One. So if you cut this Diagram into half, maksud dia separuh, size dia 0.5. Separuh sini 0.5. 0.5 campur 0.5 dapatlah 100% which is 1. Faham? That is why for when you read this table, you actually looking at the one side of the table sahaja. So the bigger your Z value, the bigger your probability. Okay. And normally tengoklah kalau you nak cari probability belah sini ke belah sana, you kena kan kita tengok nota tu, dia akan you minus. Okay, if you, because whenever you read this table, it is always from zero. So if I nak tanya you, what is the area more than, more than 1.96, more than, awak jangan ambil 0 0.475, more than maksud dia half minus 0 0.475. So you akan dapat area putih sini, nampak? Faham tak? So it depends on you nak cari apa. Kalau you nak tengok area from 0 until 1.96, then your answer is 0 0.475. Tapi kalau you nak cari, I need an area more than 1.96, more than. Maksudnya belah sini yang putih ni. So to get this area is half. Kenapa half? So, ni separuh kan? Half minus this chocolate area. Then you akan dapat lah apa jawapan you? Tolak je lah. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.475 ber 0. Uh, Allah, congak, congak. <laughs> Itu ada jawapan dia. The, the last sana, the complement. <coughs> okay, this one is probability lah. So, in your assignment one tu, you pakai formula yang sampling distribution sample mean. Maksud dia, it's, instead of x, it's x bar. So, you are finding probabilities for means. Kalau soalan biasa, you're finding probability untuk x. Itu beza dia. Kenapa beza? Because X tu is a value, satu value. Awak kan pergi shopping, banyak value kan? In your shopping kit tu banyak benda kot. So you akan dapat their average, betul? So memang you kira you pakai average. So that's why you need to change your formula tu. Instead of X minus mu over standard deviation, it's X bar minus mu over standard error. Standard error is sigma over the square root of N. So if you pack, if you like refer to the 
Okay, let's go back to our class study. If you refer to the assignment question, kan kat sini, I dah bagi kot hint. Nampak ni? Refer to what page? Are you all refer dekat page 2. But preferably, uh, while you baca dah lalang tu, I think I mentioned to some of you did email ni. Dah lalang you dah baca chapter A tu, bacalah the whole chapter. I tulis this specific because to answer question number 4 ni, Memang is this. The answer is here. Memang dah bagi dah pun. Tapi some student mungkin tak faham the concept. So better for you to read daripada awal lah chapter 8 tu. Especially the central limit theorem. Kenapa kita kena buat semua ni? They, they explain kat you guys tu. So chapter 8. But the thing is you need to know how to do probability lah preferably. Sebab kalau tak faham probability, then you will not really uh, understand or appreciate kenapa kita buat semua benda ni. Ha, sebab you kena kira kan? You want to calculate the probability kan? Ah, itu je lah. Biasanya you need to apply this. Nah, you tengok kat e-book, ada bagi e-book kan? So you just refer to these pages. The way to do it is actually there. Memang kat situ. Okay. So but uh, so this uh, this page, chapter 8, this is for the fourth question. First question is you guys go out. Or if you don't want to go out or cannot go out, then you go and do online shopping. Yeah, tak masalah. Okay, there's so many online apps. You don't have to really buy anything. It's just pretend okay and um these two parts calculate average and calculate salvation ni ni biasa yang you belajar before this lah chapter 3 kot tak silap ha? chapter 3 you dah tahu dah macam ni you calculate lah you punya average you calculate lah average ni mean lah eh? you calculate your mean you calculate salvation for your sample eh jangan pakai population pula kenapa sample because you select what you selected at least 25 items. Awak yang sendiri yang collect item tu. So, this sample lah. So, some student guna population punya formula. Kenapa you pakai population? Population maksudnya the whole shopping place. Kali pergi Tesco tu semua. All of the grocery item tu lah population you. Padahal you pergi ambil 25 je kot. Ke 30 item je kot. So, tu logik eh. Benda macam tu you kena. That's why I need you to figure out sendiri. Benda macam tu lah. Okay. So, itu je. This is your assignment. And here, assignment one. Okay. I hope okay lah, cover. Ingat, ulang balik. Question four ni, the answer is here. Dah tulis kot. Is there. But kalau nak lagi more depth, you read lah awal-awal tu, especially the central limit theorem. Kenapa we have to do it. Okay. So then, ni assignment one. Okay, siapkan dulu ni. Ha, ataupun sama you tengah siapkan your infographic lagi ha, Yang hantarlah ni dulu Okay ni dulu Patut ni dah siap lama dah Kau saya bagi apa apa daripada awal tu kan Okay Hantar dulu Okay I will be grading you guys Sebab now I tengah grade my full time student Dia orang beratus So I still halfway to go baru marking 60 Eh 80 I kena grade lagi 60 So It will take a while Tapi you guys just hantar aja kat sini until when you are done with the assignment 1, then you can do assignment 2. Ni assignment 2. Semua ada kat sini. Okay, semua soalan kat situ. Uh, submit pun kat sini. Juga. Okay. So guys, how many are there in our class now? Nampak tak? Eh, tak nampak. Nine. Nine. Termasuk saya? Sama? Uh, uh, include you, ten. Oh, okay lah seorang. Welcome. Okay. Anyway, I mentioned to you, I have two important announcements to make kan uh, today. The first announcement I dah bagi tahu, which is just to remind you of your deadlines. Ni semua ada kat sini eh. Ni deadline ya. Now the second announcement is the most important. Okay if you tengok kat class website, this is our class website betul. Some of you mungkin tak pernah datang lagi dan nak habis SEM ni. This is our class website. To go here you just google je. You google Dress Teachers. Tak payah nak hafal ni. Tak siapa suruh you hafal my URL. No one does that. Ada some student tanya macam mana nak uh, hafal. Tak payah hafal. You pergi kat google you type je. Dress Teachers ni akan keluar lah website ni. Okay so you go to your uh, BBM eh. Pergi kat BBM tu. Jangan pergi tempat lain. Pergi kat BBM. You go to Weekly Planner. I ada ubah sikit. As I mentioned to you, the only reason why I can only tell you guys this now is because uh, I've only gotten the green light from my director, BBM program, Dr. Wan Raida. They said, okay, you can do this. Before this, if you notice, kita tengok ni, eh? this is a weekly planner or your weekly planner. I buka sikit, besar kali you all nampak. 
Okay, this is our weekly planner. Nampak? I do ubah sikit tau. Nampak sini bawah. If you have the original weekly planner, kat sini I tulis 24 January. Because that is the date in your BBM schedule. Betul? Ha, you tengoklah. Okay, by right, 24 January, you will have your final exam tau. Kau boleh ingat tak? Tak ingat ni. <laughs> anyway, if you jadi saya tengok jadual tu, patut kau tahu lah. 24 January is by right, you punya final exam. Final exam. Tapi sekarang ni ada ubah. Okay, you will not nampak ni. There will be no final exam. Final exam maksudnya exam lah. As in exam. You buat uh, one hour ke apa pun di depan live macam tu. Allah hai. Um, that's what the some they actually do for live exam. You can on you punya zoom tu. <laughs> macam ni. And then you buat something like that. So I rasa macam, I don't know. Some people find it okay. But I think it's not really a productive time for me. Can, and for me to nak check you all buat kerja ke tak. And if a student nak cheat, you can always cheat. Boleh je buka window tepi tu kan. Like I would know. Some classes actually have to the extent letak mirror kat belakang student so that the lecture boleh tengok the screen kan. Nak make sure budak tu buka window yang pelik-pelik ke apa. So I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not to the extent macam malas lah. I, I don't want to be checking you all cheat ke tak pada I. You are the one who should be responsible you cheat ke tak, not me. I don't want to know to the extent. So um, for my full time students, diorang tak ada exam, final exam. The only thing they have is quiz. You all tak ada quiz kan? Beza you and the finest, uh, the full-time student is uh, they have quizzes. They also have two assignments but their questions are much lengthier. Okay, you all ada sampai empat je kan? You ada sampai lima, ada enam macam tu. Their questions are lengthier. They have quizzes and they also don't have final exam but they have this mini project. So for you guys, I would like to be consistent juga. Cuma bezanya you all tak ada quiz. In fact, you all tak ada exam langsung. Masa tak? You only have infographics. Yang macam buat-buat infographics. And then you have assignment satu that you're doing now. And you have assignment two that you're about to do. And finally, you have mini project. The distance between habis je assignment two dengan mini project ni. Okay, your assignment two, the deadline is 17 January. 17 January, I have calendar kat sini. You boleh tengok. Ni eh, January. Ni, betul. Deadline... Second assignment is 17 January. So you have about berapa? One, two weeks lah kan? To submit your mini project. Okay. And to make your mini project much more orang kata tak adalah simple tapi it's not additional work at all. You don't have to do a new data collection. You know what you've done for your infographics? You It will just continue from your Infographics sahaja. Nampak? So basically whatever you have done for infographics tu, I hope you tak buang eh. Simpan lagi kan. You you sambung. Itu je. Um, untuk budak full time, they have to do something totally different. But for you guys, it macam senang sikit. Okay, so I'll talk about it. So this is very important. I repeat ya. Yeah? So for you guys, there will be no final exam. So janganlah lepas tanya, madam apa coverage exam. Tak ada exam. So there's no final exam. Tapi, it will be replaced. I still need to have a final assessment. This is where I um, discussed with uh, Dr. Wan and she said, Bolehlah, you buat je lah how I do it with my full-time students because we still need to assess 40%, betul? Kalau tak, you punya final exam tu worth their 40%. Your infographics, 20%. Assignments, you 40%. Okay. So, baru 60%. So, another 40% tu, alamak, hilang pula. Tak keluar pula ke sini. Your mini project. It's worth 40%. It's just ganti je. Okay, faham? So instead of exam bertulis. Okay, worth 3 hours. 3 jam exam bertulis. Kita ganti with a project. Which I believe kalau exam is very rigid. Betul? Exam tu exam lah. Either you get it right or wrong. Okay, kalau project ni macam there's more leeway on, you know, other aspects for you to get marks. Maybe in terms of creativity ke, or cara you olah ke, you get what I mean? So, lebih linear lah, I would say. But you have to work hard for it lah. Uh, work, work lah. Macam I nak tolong, nak bagi makan lebih, tapi you all macam <laughs> kena lah berusaha sikit. So, uh, where to get the information? Okay, you go back to the class website sini. Under BBM, nampak? Go to cost assessment, macam biasa. Go to your course assessment. Okay. You've done your infographics, betul? So, done lah. Ni done. Ha, siapa nak buat, you boleh tick kat sini. Done. 
go down, scroll ke bawah. Uh, ni nanti insyaAllah I will post the FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions for Assignment 2 pula. I tak buat lagi. So you all tak study kan? So nantilah I'll do this. And here, nampak ni? Mini project I'll, ada tambah kat sini. So this is basically a question. Ini, this is the rubric <coughs> or the scoring guide. Okay, maksudnya you ikutlah kalau dapat makan banyak, you follow je lah scoring guide tu. Right, so you can download this. Okay, let's make it bigger. So you all be nampak. So what is this mini project? Again, for your mini project, is worth 40%. It's just to replace your final exam tau, okay? So lepas ni memang tak ada exam. Kita buat exam. But I would say, for me personally, I don't know with you guys, but from the response that I get to some of you, yeah, as you commented or um, emailed me, I think you would learn a lot sebenarnya. If you actually do your projects yourself, if you actually did your infographic yourself, you would have learned a lot, I would say. You learn a lot at the same time, macam tak ada like you detested. Get what I mean? Like you not test. Because I believe now, especially in during this online learning ni, memang it's very, it's an unprecedented time. So the way we mark should be different juga. I, pun, I don't really believe in the traditional pen and paper exam, whatever exam, especially now during online ni. Cara kita belajar ada berbeza. Cara mengajar pun berbeza. So kenapa kena find exam kena sama juga, right? Return. So I think uh, by doing this project, memang you have to read a lot on your own. And if you tak faham, you email I. Because each and every one of you, your topics are different, betul? Berbeza. So there's no way pun you all nak tiru each other pun. Macam berbeza-beza you, you punya data and all that. So for me, that's how you actually learn statistics. By actually going out and collect your own data. So let's read the question. How do you do this mini project? This assignment is to enhance your understanding further. What you need to do is you need to carry out this project individually because you punya infographic pun individual kan? All of you buat kerja sorang-sorang, sama je. Individually. Uh, on the same topic that you chose for infographic, so maksudnya whatever you've done for infographic tu, simpan, you sambung je. Okay. And you have to create a presentation. Okay. However, you don't have to present pun. Maksudnya you prepare the slides sahaja. Slides tu yang you submit to me. Okay. So there's a pros and cons to that. The pro is you tak payah present. But the con is you punya presentation tu kena tune dah juga. Because if it's like not clear, you are not there to present it to me. Faham? Because sometimes when you present kan, you dah tunjuk slide. Maksud you explain uh, this, 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 this. Tapi sekarang ni you tak present. As in physically, you are not there personally to present. You will only submit your presentation slides. So you have to be sure, you have to make sure you punya slides tu agak detail lah. Betul? Tapi I'll show you an example later. Okay. So this is what you need to do because remember, kenapa banyak sebab your project is 40%. Okay. 40%. So obviously the punya content tu kena lengthy juga. Okay. Otherwise kan uh, BBM akan tanya I Kenapa simple sangat project you? So, okay. So, this is how it is. Okay. But, nampak banyak. But, half of it you dah buat dah. Okay. This is the first part of your presentation. You kena ada intro. Obviously, you kena lah ada intro. But, you have to explain what your topic is about. Define the terms. Variable you guna apa. And the thing is, most of these things you dah buat betul. In your infographics kan. In a way lah, you dah prepare. So, that's what I mean here. You may use what you have done for infographics. And of course, kalau nak bonus mark tu, you add on something else. So infographic, you kan satu page je, kan simple. So this is basically you just elaborate je, macam lebihkan sikit, you punya infographics. Tu je. So anyway, you've done this already. Just some of you bought on social media, some of you bought on marriage and divorce, betul kan? You dah ada data you, you dah tahu kenapa you buat. So you explain further. Okay, any extra marks lah ni. Kenapa? Why you choose that topic? What motivated you? What's the history of the topic? Some topics are the historical trend dia. You share lah. Kalau tak ada history, tak apa. You buatlah pop culture. Maksudnya, maybe you can refer, make reference to movies ke, songs ke, celebrity ke, or other historian or statistician in the past yang popularized that, whatever lah. Bapak you lah. This is where creativity comes in. You are free to do whatever you want. Okay? And you kena terangkan the statistical concept that you can relate to. So anyway, this is introduction. Okay. After you buat introduction, how many slides up to you? Empat ke lima ke enam slide, whatever. Okay. Nanti I tell the maximum slide is 20 sahaja. Don't go more than that. You nak hantar less than 20 pun tak apa. Boleh. 
Okay, you agak-agak lah. You ada 20 slides. You ada tiga bahagian besar. So, you bahagi-bahagi lah. But obviously, bahagian bawah-bawah ni more slides lah kot. Kan, intro tu cukup lah. Four pages, eh, four slides cukup lah. Jangan panjang, berjelas. Some student panjang intro dia. Padahal kat belakang tu banyak akar. Okay. Uh, next to the introduction or after introduction, you need to talk about you punya data collection. The thing is semua ni guys, benda ni semua, is nothing new kan? You have done all of this, right? For your infographics, betul? Assuming you buat sendiri lah. Ni yang bahaya kalau you pergi copy kerja orang. You tak buat sendiri. But I'm assuming most of you, memang you collect your own data. Okay, if you used primary data, you terangkan. If okay, Basically, this data collection, you explain how you obtained your data. So if you collected your data first hand, you explain lah you punya sampling pakai apa, whatever. Be honest kat situ. You pakai apa benda tulis kat situ. If you collect your data pakai second data, you kena explain juga banyak benda kena explain. What is the website page? How does it look like? So benda tu lah. Basically here is you um, telling me you punya process. What have you done the last few months yang dapatkan data-data itu? What have you done? Of course, kalau you buat extra, like you actually calculate your sample size tu, itu extra lah, bonus lah. You tulis everything there. Okay, this is basically where you flex. Uh, flex a sikit. Show off a sikit apa you've done. Jangan malu-malu. Eh. Ni tak ada masa nak malu-malu. Ini projek ni memang. Benda yang buat beria tu, tunjuk semua. Show off a sikit. Okay, so you don't need to be shy or tak apalah tak payah tunjuk. No, no, no. You show everything. And finally, the biggest part is your data analysis lah. Which again, you've done most of it. The first, you need to do three things for your data analysis. The first thing is you need to show you put your descriptive statistics. Anyway, this thing you dah buat dah kan? For your infographics. So, you can actually just cut and paste dia benda you dah buat for your infographics tu letak dalam slides. Done. Or kalau you nak macam extra marks, you, you add on or whatever. Okay, you need to do your central tendency, which you've done. Dispersion, which you've done. Skewness ke benda. You dah buat kan semua ni. Semua benda ni you dah buat dah for your infographics. So, uh, masa I design this mini project, I want to make sure that you macam tak adalah terbeban with extra work sangat. There are additional work, tapi tak adalah you have to do everything all over again. Tak. You just use the data and what you've done earlier for your infographics. You just need to add on. So, this first part you dah buat, you tambah. Okay, you can just cut and paste and letak lah kat slides tu. Arrange lah lah lah, whichever. And these two are new. You also need to do one application. Apa benda application you pilih? Choose. Jangan buat semua. Orang kata pilih satu, buat dua tiga, lepas tu complain. Banyak kerja. So I just said only one. Apa benda application, apa yang you all dah belajar. You all dah belajar ni kan? Empirical rule. Dah belajar, remember? In the, tengok balik lah dekat video lecture tu kan ada. I have a list. Sekejap, hold on. Kalau you all tak tahu ke apa. Ni YouTube. Dries. Uh, if you go here. This is the playlist for all the statistics. Uh, tengok kat sini. Semua ada kat situ ni. Shabby Chef's Theorem. Benda ni lah. I think ada letak aku kan. Every time you have class kan ada tulis. Which video lecture you should be viewing for that week. Kalau you selama ni tak pernah tengok sekarang baru tengok memang nampak macam banyaknya. But if you tengok sikit-sikit then you will not feel macam burden lah. Okay. Eh kejap. Where was I? Buka balik. Okay here. Oops, sorry, here. You just need to do one application. Pilih, choose. You nak do buat empirical rule or Shabby Chef's theorem ke? Ni either or eh. Or you nak buat probability ke kan? You all tengah buat assignment one sekarang kan? You dah ada experience. Or kalau tak nak buat probability, you can do or find probabilities for the sampling, distribution, sample mean ke? Suka hati you. Benda yang you dah buat sekarang macam it's like an additional thing. You just practice lagi. Okay? For those of you who have done your assignment one, you actually dah buat lah ni. Probabilities for sampling distribution sampling mean. Okay, if you're still confused, apa beza? What's the difference between probability biasa, finding probability yang normal, or finding probabilities for sampling distribution sampling mean? Beza dia, when you find probability je, you punya x is x. It's a value. x you define as the number of emails received. The number of... Uh, students who came to class or the amount of salary a month. Nampak? X awak tu value. Tapi if you're doing a probability for the sampling distribution of sample mean, you punya X bukan X dah. It's X bar. Tak tak X bar tak apa? Average. Soalan pun berbeza. What is the probability that the average income is more than 1,000? What is the probability that the average number of students is more than 50? Nampak? 
dengar soalan tu memang beza. Satu tu what is the probability that there are five students? Ataupun what is the average that the uh, what is the probability that the average number of students is more than five? Ada beza? So that's the main difference eh. So you know that if you just apply probability biasa, the formula or to standardize is x minus mu over sigma. Dah. But if you are finding the probability for sample distribution sample mean, it's x bar minus mu over standard error. Well, standard error is standard deviation over n square. Eh, eh, square root. Square root of n. Ni semua nanti saya tunjuklah kat textbook mana nak tengok. Semua ada. Okay. So you just need to do one application. Pilih lah. I repeat, you choose sama ada you want to do empirical rule or Chebyshev's theorem. For me personally ni senang. Kalau you all tak tahu nak buat apa, buat ni je lah. It's very simple. Or you can do a probability. Or you can do a probability for sampling distribution sampling mean. Or you can do confidence interval. A confidence interval I think is today's lecture. Ni pun senang juga. So most students memang buat ni lah sama ada A ataupun D. Up to you. But naturally the more complicated you punya application tu macam extra marks lah kan. Biasa because markah ni berbeza ikut effort. Your effort and of course kena betul lah. Okay. Um, also interpret your findings. So when you find it, what does it mean? Okay. And finally, you need to conduct one simple hypothesis test. Benda ni is also in your syllabus. Choose. Okay, you need to do a test that is appropriate bersesuaian with your data set. You can do either. So like you guys, BBM student, memang you only learn four tests. Kau tak silap. So you have an option to choose four lah. Full-time student belajar ten tests. So, dia orang ada lagi banyak. The more they learn, the more options they have. But you guys, you are limited to this saja. You can do either. Nampak? Either. Jangan buat banyak-banyak. Do either a one sample mean test. One sample proportion test. Goodness of fit test. ANOVA. Or contagious material analysis. Lima benda ni. Again, you tak belajar lagi semua ni. Relax dulu. Tunggu. But if you rasa macam nak buat tengok the video cepat cepat, it's all here because I made a playlist so it's all there already. So it's up to you when you want to watch it. So again, I repeat, mana nak tengok mana? Remember your application tadi? The application is you can choose here. Either you do shabby chefs or empirical rule, dua ni. Or you can do probability, ni semua probability. Any of them, you pilih lah macam... You dah tahu konsep, tapi sekarang ni you apply konsep tu but use your data. Itu yang berbeza je. Your own data yang you collect tu you pakai. Suka hati lah nak buat soalan apa-apa. Faham tak? As long as you boleh apply. That's why it's called application. You apply, you punya data tu. Okay, apa tadi? Um, Shabishev's theorem, empirical rule, probability. Eh, ni. Or you want to do probability for sampling distribution, sample mean. Ni dua ni. Ni lah sini. Nampak ni, sampling methods ni is for the part the, yang suruh explain ni tadi. Your data collection kan, you kena buat tiga benda kan. Satu, introduction, data collection, kan, and data analysis. For data collection ni kat sini lah, Sam, um, sampling method. If you pakai sampling method apa-apa lah, you can terangkan. So here, confidence interval sini. That is the last, I think it's today's lecture. Okay, it depends on your sample size. If you have a large sample size, this is how you calculate your confidence interval. If you have a small sample size, this is how you calculate your confidence interval. Tu je, dua ni je. And of course, you need to know lah. Um, T distribution is if we have a small sample size. Okay. Ni pun boleh juga if you want to find confidence interval for population proportions. Kata you lah, whichever. So, it all depends on your data. And finally, apa tadi? Test, eh? hypothesis test. Option you guys tak banyak because your coverage in the syllabus pun sikit. So for you guys, for the test, you hanya refer to this. Obviously, please tengok ni dulu eh. Steps. This is the first one. Introduction. I can terangkan you all the step by step. Satu, dua, tiga, until six. There's six steps. Steps, you read this. Then you tengok sini. Hypothesis test for one sample in the case where you know your sigma and your sample size is large. Or hypothesis test for one sample if you don't know your sigma and your sample size is small. Dua ni je. Ini bonus. If you buat p-value ni bonus lah. Anything yang require extra effort semua memang lah bonus. Kan? Membezakan you with the other students. Itu je. 
um, satu, one, two, three, four here. Dan ini semua lain ni boleh boleh ignore. Two independent sample ignore, pull t test ignore, independent sample sebab semua ni semua dua sample. You, your coverage only one sample kan? Turun and ini pun ni ANOVA test. Kan yang macam tadi ANOVA. Uh, ni hypothesis test one sample portion ni tengok ni tak payah ignore anything yang you nampak tu sample ni boleh ignore you are focus one sample only so this sample you satu from one group saja kalau tu sample ada dua group ni pun boleh tengok goodness of fit test ni pun boleh tengok test of association so i repeat banyak-banyak yang you nak refer to if you want one two ni boleh lah three four Five, six, seven, seven videos to for you to choose from. Bukan buat semua. You tengok semua. You have to watch everything for you to have a better option. You watch everything, then you choose which test you want to do, so you can do your third data analysis. See me. Tuja. That's it. I repeat. Ah, what you need to do introduction again. Most of this introduction ni you dah buat dah pun. For your infographic, so you just have to add on. Kalau tak nak add on, tak apa lah, buat je lah, whichever. Tapi for friends who have added on, I extra marks lah. Secondly, you can flex sikit or share how you collected your data. If you use secondary data, kena provide full reference. Kalau ada internet link lagi bagus, click kat situ. Everything lah. And then if you extra, some student memang extra, dia punya data tu, dia download, dia letak. Apa pandai lah buat link ke apa. They attach dengan the Google Drive, whichever, so that I can have access to your data. You can submit pun nanti, you have to submit your data set. Um, but since you already submitted your data set, must infographics, can. But then for your uh, mini project, you are doing extra things. So maybe you would like to submit a more updated data set. And finally, the third one, data analysis, you need to do three things. Uh, the basic descriptive statistic, one practical application, and one hypothesis test. I highlight the important things. You need to do a presentation, as I mentioned to you before. You have two options. Some either you not about PowerPoint or Google Slides. Okay, and of course, at this day and age, tak ada ni orang buat from scratch. I'm sure you all pakai template. Betul? Pakai je lah template. You Google je. Free templates for PowerPoint. Memang lambat lah lawa. All you have to do is letak figure je. Okay, there are numerous templates. Uh, in my case now, I prefer to use Google Slides. There are also numerous of templates for Google Slides. Template tu memang nampak comel kan, cantik. But of course, you have to adapt it according to what you guys are doing lah, your data and whatnot. Okay, so please make sure no more than 20 slides. You have to do a lot of things in only 20 slides. So, pandai-pandai agih-agihkan. How many slides for intro? How many slides for data collection? How many slides for analysis? Tu lah patut banyak. Okay, make sure your cover, your topic, your title, your name, metric number. This is section one. Deadline is 31st January, end of this month. Okay, you have actually two months, eh, two weeks after your submission of assignment two. In fact, actually, you can do it now. Because you have your data, right? You, you've done it for your infographic, so you do have your stuffs. Okay, you can read it. This is rubric. Dia. Kalau nak tahu markah berapa, tengok je kat sini. If you want 10 marks, saya buatlah lebih sikit. So, this is what you are required to do. You you need to what, what, what. Semua tulis kat sini. Markah 10. Data collection. Remember, reference must be shown. Raw data shown semua. Markah pun 10. Let's make it simple. Semua 10 je lah. Okay. Here's your data analysis. Again, you've done this for your infographics. You tambah je lah extra. Whatever. Markah pun 10. Application also 10 marks. Hypothesis test also 10 marks. And of course, the extra lah. Which I cannot give you kalau kita buat test. If you buat final exam, quiz ke test, I tak boleh bagi markah creativity ni. Some of you are creative maybe. Okay, so you can get marks there. If you are not creative, tak apa kan sekarang ada template banyak. So everyone will have beautiful slides. Senang je kot. Tapi yelah, sometimes some student, dua student pakai template yang sama. But one of them will just present better. So again, you can play around with that. So how to get marks here, ada tulis here, whichever. So I get marks. Full marks for your mini projects, 60 je. But this 60 nanti will be converted to 40%. Okay. So this is basically the rubric. Tengok kat mana, you pergi kat class website. 
Alamak. Okay, you go to the class website sini. Okay, I repeat again. Eh. Class website. Go to statistical methods BBM. Click on course assessment and you will be brought to this page. Okay, you scroll down. You can find your mini project. Contoh, let's say you blur lah, Madam macam nak buat mesti aja depan ni biasa orang akan email. It's okay. You nampak sini? Nampak ni drop down? Nampak ni? Sample project. Before this, I dah bagi you sample infographics. Correct? Now, there's also sample project. You can click on it. These are basically the sample projects from my previous students. Um, but they are full-time students lah because yang part-timers, I tak pernah bagi, you know, I, I have given them before, but it was a long time ago. I think it was like five, six years ago. So, soalan pun dah beza, different. So, no point of me sharing it with you guys. But here, you can see, ni buat disclaimer sikit. Uh, previously, these are all group projects. Obviously, that can but I have hundreds of students for full-time. So, nak buat orang. But then for my ERTS sekarang memang, I have buat individual. So memang I 120 plus student. Memang tengoklah 100 beratus projects. Sebab buat group ni online masalah kan. Projek lain pula. Many sleeping partners. Literally. Dua tiga orang je buat kerja. Yang lagi tiga empat orang tu senyap tidur je. So macam kesian. Kat member yang actually buat kerja. So that's why in the end biarlah semua individual. Anyway, this ada contoh. Alright. So you can have a look. Ni contohnya let's look at it. Ni impact of breakfast. So group ni nak tengok senang je, you make it bigger. Okay. Because group ni buat dalam PowerPoint. Okay. So kalau you nak tengok slide, you buka je. You can download it and you can tengok. Ataupun kalau you malas nak tengok PowerPoint slide, you scroll je. Nampak macam PDF. Betul? So it's up to you. Tapi I will actually buka. I will click on open Google Slides. And then, okay, the way to do it, you just click on it. And then you press play. Mana play I? Um, hold on, mana play? Present. Ya nampak eh? Hold on. Uh. Okay, this is their group. So, ada lima orang kan? One, two, three, four, six people. The thing with group ni bagus kalau semua orang boleh buat kerja. Bagus lah. Kalau you semua orang buat kerja, dia buat individual. Okay, so anyway, this is their project. So, nampak ada tiga benda kan? Introduction, data collection, data analysis, table of contents. Again, here they used template, uh, I suppose. Okay, here's the introduction. They terangkan lah cerita dia. This is what we want to do. You do what? Apa definition? Sebagi lah, nak buat makan, buat lagi detail, whichever. Okay, level of measurement, whatever, whatever, blah. Why we chose this topic? Okay, ni dia terangkan lah. The reason, motivation, apa dia buat. Okay, the second part, data collection. So, here dia cerita lah. Uh, we collected the data using... Apa ni, online survey, whatever. Ni semua benda yang you dah buat eh, for infographics. It's not like I need you to do something new. Tak. Don't have to waste time and buat benda baru. Tak payah. You just use what you did for your infographics because you have your data. Limitations, whatever. Ni in this way, this group buat dua-dua. They did both primary data and secondary data. They're extra sikit eh. Extra dapat nak makan lebih sikit. So um, here, the data analysis. Apa dia buat? Dia kan data analysis dia buat tiga benda kan? Satu is the descriptive statistics. Dia find lah dia mean, median, mode. Okay. Lepas dah buat tu. But here this group I tak bagi makan banyak sangat because they didn't show working. Ha, kalau nak makan lebih, you tunjuk lah working you. Ha, nanti I can, maybe there are other examples, other groups they actually tunjuk working dia. Ha, simple dengan I ni, you nak bagi banyak makan, lagi detail lah itu je. Macam ni diorang dah bagi the mean je tapi tak tunjuk macam kira kan dia so this is my note for them lah kira all of this um sample yang I tunjuk kau ni bukan dia dapat 100% tak sama ada dapat 75% je I think this group dapat something something because banyak tak complete but I just like to show you that it's fine not to be perfect as long as you've done something to the best of your knowledge okay and then they buat lah ni so this is their uh, mean median mode their standard deviation uh, skewness and then what and then this is for the secondary data plot because they have two types of data. They did both primary and secondary. And then they explain lagi banyak lah dia buat. What does it mean? The interpretations pun lah extra sikit lah dia buat. And then uh, practical application, they did probability. Dia orang kan because they dah collect data kan. So they group it into groups. How many semua. Dia kira probability sendiri. Dia semua buat sendiri. Everything sendiri. Because it's your data. You tak boleh nak tanya I how to do it because it's your own data. 
So you will learn how to find probability kan. I think dalam discrete, dalam my video, discrete probability distribution, ada ajar you. Macam mana nak cari discrete probability distribution from total ni, ambil 4 ni, divide by the total, dapatlah probability dia. Macam tu je. So to get the average, you pakai. So all this table memang dia buat sendiri, you can refer to the respective video lectures. Okay, once you have the mean, they just interpret je lah. Or you, in your case, you interpret lah. Uh, and then they because they have two data set banyak kerja lah dia buat juga probability for their secondary data pula so if you guys only have one data set pakai satu tu je lah cukup finally hypothesis testing okay they wanted to okay, because they had 32 sample they wanted to see how many days in a week they did not eat breakfast again hypothesis test ni pun you buat sendiri so I learn semua you buat sendiri you sendiri yang hypothesis apa benda you nak cari sebenarnya Everything is based on your data set, you buat sendiri. Semua benda sendiri. So, they wanted to know how many days dalam satu minggu tu student tak makan. Right. Uh, average students eat breakfast five days a week. Oh, uh, whichever lah. So, dia buat lagi dia buat step one, step two, step three, step four, then six steps. Five and six. Okay. Nampak tak berapa banyak slide zonggu ni? Sikit je kan? Dua, 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 whichever lah macam tu. So again, it's up to you. Um, then finally, again, because they had two data set, they buat juga hypothesis testing for the second data set. This is secondary data. I think they took the data from another study. Tapi make sure when you say you use data set, you have to be able to download semua benda lah. Again, step one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, you all tak payahlah buat dua test. Dia orang ni over sikit sebab ada dua data set. So, they did more. And then finish, reference, whatever. Okay, done. So, this is the first group. Or first example lah, bukan first group. Saya tutup ni. Okay, never mind. There are plenty others. So, I share with you here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six examples. Topik dia semua berbeza lah kot from yours Or maybe similar tapi you all punya Benda lain-lain kan So you guys can check So this group did on breakfast Here did on social media uh, New group on telecommunication Here sleep patterns Movie preferences and some comparison of Earnings Duit, uh, duit pula income Okay Macam nak naik kan Haa ah. Okay. Um, sorry, Doctor. Yeah. Yes, yes. Cakap, cakap. Tak dengar. Siapa cakap? Brother, can you speak louder? I tak dengar you lah. Hakim, Hakim. Hakim, okay. Yes. Lukman Hakim. Yes. Cakap kuat sikit. Tak dengar you lah. Uh, Okay, uh, kalau kalau sekarang dengar tak jelas tak? Yes, yes. Ya, yeah. now okay. Okay, alright. So, uh, uh, which, okay, which one doktor prefer? Uh, maksudnya macam, kalau macam data collection by raw data, macam macam bila kita gunakan Google Sheet, Excel, dia ada dah memang ada dia punya formula-formula untuk cari average ataupun cari the power of. Kalau macam tu, uh, doktor lagi prefer di situ ke ataupun kena ada tambahan kerja di mana macam uh, tam, 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 yalah, Benda tu is just helping you. Tam, Memanglah dah ada di situ. Hmm? Yeah, if you use the sheet, dia punya memang exam. They bagi you that, they, they will straight away give you your mean betul. Kan? If you use Google Sheet or Excel, kan? You pakai formula tu kan? You get your answer je, right? So if you know how to calculate it by manual, patut dia dapat jawapan sama lah betul? So you show macam tu lah. Show you're working. By right, if you did it properly, you will get the same. Uh, ataupun kalau berbeza pun, ada uh, semua pun sikit-sikit je. So tak ada masalah. You can use whatever you find from your Google Sheet. It's right, you dah buat pakai situ. Tapi you need to show that you're able to use the formula. That's where the marks come in. If you pakai formula tu, you akan dapat jawapan yang sama lah kan. So in a way dia macam you are uh, test apa tu um, double checking your work lah. Okay je tak masalah. You show you're working. Tapi kalau macam maybe that group tadi tu dia tak tunjuk working ni sebab dia ambil terus daripada Google Sheet. Mesti tak kira-kira tu. You all dapat markah takat tu je lah. 
But if like some other group mana, contoh group mana eh, yang tunjuk working, the working tu maksud dia, sekejap eh, let's open this one. I think it's this group. Aku tak ingat which group. Bukan, not this one. Okay, so we are opening this one. Banyak sangat window dah ni. Okay, so Preferably kalau nak lagi standardized or simple for me to buka, you just use Google Sheet je lah. Okay, so this group, and nak tengok dia, dia tak working dia. And then effect dengan banyak sangat ni, eh? actually tak gemar sangat ni banyak sangat effect shum 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 macam ni, jadi lambat pula. Tapi budak-budak suka betul boleh tak? Hold on. Tak apalah, tak payah buka. We tengok macam ni je. Okay, so we go down. Tak payah buka the presentation. I will see the presentation lah but now for now we just look at their examples. So here are the introduction. I think they took it as part from their infographics as well. Then tambah-tambah aje. Then they add on news articles and they talked about what type of data they used. Ni data collection dia orang, they explain, they use what, create Google form whichever. Okay. Ah, nampak ni? This is what I mean. So kalau you all dah buat pakai Google Sheet ke Excel ke apa memanglah you kena dapat kan your mean, your standard deviation. Tak apa bukan buang figure tu, ambil lah figure tu. Cuma sekarang ni awak kena tunjuk you punya working je lah. By right, betul tak? By right, if you buat working you, you akan dapat jawapan sama macam yang Excel kira lah kan. Bukan yang Excel tu kira lain awak kira lain. Betul tak? So pada saya tak ada masalah. In fact better lah macam tu. So awak kira tu, eh kenapa tak sama ni? There is, the Excel is correcting you, helping you. But as I mentioned to Zwaina tadi, kalau macam you kira ada beza sikit dengan Excel, tak apalah. Beza sikit-sikit biasa because it's due to um, decimal points. Tak apa. Tunjuk ni nampak effort. So nampak obviously group ni makan dia lebih sikit daripada group tadi. Sebab this group actually show working ni nampak. Nampak data tu satu-satu dia tunjuk how they calculate semua. Ni pun kira macam agak um, general. There are some yang actually bagi link kat bawah ni betul-betul dia tunjuk dia punya uh, calculations. Okay macam contoh. Ni probability tunjuk juga. Again exactly. Skewness. All the formulas tunjuk. To me senang je. Nak makan banyak you kena detail. Tu je. The more detailed you are the more marks you get. Itu je, senang je. Sebab so, makan sepuluh kan. Bukan, not, not to say that if you don't show any working, you dapat zero tak. Maybe I bagi five, better than nothing and half. Nah, compared relative dengan member yang actually tunjuk working semua. Nah, itu je lah basis sebab makan sepuluh kan. And then here, macam ni tunjuk exactly. Tadi group tadi tunjuk tak probability. Asal ada kot. Tapi macam beza tak? Group tadi probability, dia buat probability discrete. That is why dia pakai table banyak. Betul tak? Kan dia pakai table-table. This group dia pakai binomial. Eh tak, dia pakai normal distribution. <coughs> That is why they are working macam ni. So again, it depends on what you are using lah. Obviously, setiap orang akan do different things depending on your data set. And this group, dia punya hypothesis testing yang dia pakai um, ni. Macam kind of similar with just now. One sample. This is one sample mean test. Group tadi pun I say one sample mean test. Most groups buat tu lah one sample mean test. Okay, again here they show everything. How to find. Okay, um, they did one sample mean test. Uh, ni pun one sample mean test. Oh here, oh they did two tests. Nah, Biasa lah, don't extra sikit. This one is a two sample. Nampak, this group buat dua test. Here is one sample mean test. And down here is a two sample. Tapi sebab you all tak belajar two sample kan? Tak why? It's not in your syllabus. Okay, they all buat lebih. Okay, that's it. So this is one example. Okay, again. Tu lah contoh dia lah. Uh, tu basic. So for you, uh, Hakim yang tanya. Boleh. Yes, you can use. Um, obviously, sebab kalau you pakai Excel kan you boleh kira kan. Uh, Excel akan you drag lagi senang. You boleh kira dia. You can get the mean, standard deviation, skewness, boleh. Uh, but then you tunjuk lah juga working. Okay. Let's say there are differences tak apa. There are some groups memang honest. This is my own calculation. This is the calculation I get from Google. Uh, apa tu Excel. Biasa tak ada beza banyak sangat. Akanlah ada beza sebab yang kira for Excel tu kan komputer. Obviously dia akan pakai all of the numbers yang berjejela punya dah semua point kat belakang tu kan. Kita kira kita dah round up. Faham? Uh, 
uh, ada lah beza sikit-sikit but sometimes memang tak ada beza kalau betul-betul kita buat if you actually use four decimal spaces memang banyak kan berjela but the numbers will be very very close to what is calculated by the uh, excel or google sheet okay again yeah tak ada masalah in fact i want you to use it kan lagi hmm. bagus nampak kan ni saya kira betul lah jawapan saya <laughs> excel pun kira macam tu uh, which is good hmm, okay apa ni yang lain-lain ni tu kelas tadi ah ya okey Ah okay, thank you. Ah okay. Anyone else tanya boleh, boleh, boleh tanya. Apa tak siapa ada kat sini? Satu, dua. Arisau ni ramai tak ada ni. Pelanti, I will post this video <laughs> in the class website. Hopefully those who didn't join today boleh lah tengok pada awal. Ah uh, so I guess uh, itu je guys. Actually for today, um, I just wanted to make the announcement. Okay, that we won't have final exam. In its place, we will have this thing called the uh, mini project. Mini je. So, kalau project tu besar, lagi banyak kerja. Okay, so you can find it here. Eh? Pergi kat website, class website. Go under course, scroll down. Alamak, my internet tak stable. Uh, and then you can find the instructions semua kat sini. Okay. Any other questions? Plura, not bad lah. Okay lah. More than half. <laughs> Your class dah mula orang. Sepuluh orang datang. Boleh lah. Okay. So, ada, ada soalan tak? Senyap je ni. I'm assuming okay lah. Kau tak okay, KO. Okay lah. Boleh lah deal. Hopefully it's doable lah. Huh? Can you on an exam? Macam okay je. Kalau some of you memang suka belajar nak exam, I buatlah exam. Tapi exam memang it will be a three hour paper lah. Then you duduk lah mengada air macam ni tiga jam. <laughs> And then it will be exam lah. Kalau exam memang in a way, I can't really help you lah. Kalau you salah tu salah lah. Uh, that is exam. It's just, I think it will be a bit more lenient when you do project ni. Macam tadi kan satu group tu tak tunjuk working. Uh, tapi dia kreatif. Dia macam and then they explain je tu. Dia dapat lah makah. Uh, for me the instructors we have more leeway. We have more uh, flexibility in finding ways to give you marks. If it's projects. Because it's very subjective kan. Dia qualitative. Kalau exam ni dia objective. You betul-betul tak betul-betul. <laughs> Either you know it or you don't know it. Uh, macam tu. So again. Hmm. But um, to be consistent. Kalau dengan full time students memang dia buat projek lah all of them because um, I personally don't believe in exam exam ni especially in online beria I buat soalan 4 penat saya tengok dia orang letak dekat kosiro letak kat check jawapan semua kat situ sebiji dah tu copy semua aduh macam so, waste my time juga I buat 4 penat tapi uh, elok macam tu I, I suruh je tutor check tu yang jawab soalan I daripada student dah you all bayar lagi kat situ So I don't really believe in exams during RTL. I say macam to the extent macam nak sengat jawapan sampai bayar kan. Ilo ibu projek. Okay. Okay. Any more? Uh, ada soalan yang tak? Before we end the class. Doctor, projek ni macam consume more time lah doctor. <laughs> Apa tu? Kalau nak buat exam, I buat aja exam. I tak masalah buat exam. <laughs> Because you have two weeks. You are the two weeks. Tak nak lah exam. Hah? Siapa tadi? Ya Allah. Tak nak lah exam. Nak exam? Eh? Nak ke tak nak tu? Tak ada? Nak exam. Nak exam? So semua orang nak exam? Tak nak. Tak nak. Tak nak exam. Nak nak buat video. Final project. Final project. Tak nak. Tak nak. Tak nak. Tak nak exam. Sebab kalau, the thing is tu, kalau I nak buat polling, nanti kan macam orang kata, ish, kelas ni macam kelas main-main. <laughs> tak ada budak nak apa, but actually I don't mind. But, tapi macam, I have to choose only one. Ha, ni ada tanya kat Dr. Wan dah. Boleh tak kalau budak tu cik, mana boleh? Kan dah konsisten. <laughs> kalau exam, semua orang exam. Kalau, kalau projek semua, projek macam lemak juga. Because I'm actually looking at, how you guys hopefully boleh perform sebenarnya 
hopefully the the chances chances kan kita belajar probability kan the chances of you guys how to do if it's exam normally it will be a three hour paper i do like a few questions with sub sub dia lah you can actually look at past years ah uh, tengok tapi i can create questions lah actually i okay je in either words in either way kerja untuk i sama banyak kalau mini project ni nampak sekarang tak ada kerja kan tapi nak marking you all tu satu kerja tu banyak tu so nak make sure consistent nak make sure macam adil tak ada macam seorang ni strict apa pun have to make sure dia ikut rubrik semua so, mai kan ikut rubrik kalau final exam i kerja sekarang i buat soalan and then you all buat tiga jam tu then the grading tu kerja juga nak make sure sama hmm. so actually I, i don't know because the thing is it's not like you are going to collect new data You already have your data. So actually tengok macam tak ada, there's not much work sebenarnya. The only work you need to do is you punya application which you can actually do already. Kalau you macam tak nak buat application baru, you dah belajar apa? The one that you have learned already, Shebyshev's theorem. You buatlah Shebyshev's theorem tu or empirical rule dah buat dah. And the test. The test is you will learn it today kot. Eh tomorrow. Besok belajar test ataupun next week. Then you'll have two weeks. Okay. And if it's final exam, it has to be on the 24th. Dia dia agak strict lah pula. Si apa? <laughs> BBM ni. So kalau exam 24th. Kalau project tu you have extra one more week lah. 24th bila? Ngam-ngam sebab tu tarikh yang dia bagi. The, the date ni yang dia slot kan. For the exam. Ah oh, yes. Exam is 24th January. Kalau you buat tu, it's 31st tadi. Okay, anyway, I actually need to go now. You have any concerns, you email ke I? Berapa orang ni ada? So, I will post this video in the class website. But tentatively right now, you will do the mini project lah, tentatively. Unless you have some sort of issues ke apa-apa. But kena, dia, dia memang kena consistent. Unfortunately lah, tak boleh bagi, you nak buat apa, you buat apa. It's, it's either or. Okay. Tapi tengok, kalau macam ramai sangat nak buat the exam, Then, but you have to tell me early lah Sebab kalau ramai sangat exam Then I have to hantar vetting semua The questions semua And then other lectures I can chip in Because sometimes I buat soalan simple Dia kata ni terlalu senang <laughs> So they have, they will add on more questions And they say the vetting The vetting tu yang takes time Okay So you can email ke I Okay Or tengok lah kalau sempat lepas ni I boleh je buat polling ha, Kalau poll tu macam you choose And then kita tengok lah percentage Majority of the class nak buat mana Uh, kalau full time student yang harap eh, nak bagi option ni You can dengar cakap what, what is being said Okay So anyway you look at the class website tu Pergi tengok what's done Either or memang balik kerja lah For you guys memang lah kan hmm? And for me too Bukan yang guna kaki je Okay so either or either way you choose For me if you are a diligent student You work hard you will be able to do well in either way Sebenarnya lah. Okay. Uh, alright. Uh, last question before we end. Tak ada? Itulah ada 10 orang je. Macam mana? Okay. Thank you. So um, apa-apa email me je lah. Uh, email me and I'll get back to you. Okay. Alright. So I will leave you to watching the video lectures for today. Or actually this week. Alright, so again, anything, you just email me, right? And good luck in submitting your, hopefully you dah hantar, dah hantar infographics tu, buang, buang ke tepi, you can focus on your uh, assignment one. Okay, thank you guys eh, Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Okay.